Okay, let's continue with our buttons. There's a few things that I want to clean up or change around. One of the things that we talked about last time was when our button is disabled, if you remember from last episode, um, I can press space and just disable it, but that text color, we, we really need to be able to change that text color to have some kind of disabled text color, as well as having a text color for the button that can be set. So let's set about doing that. And what we want to do is I'm going to put it right here. So we're going to have some just some built in stuff. So we'll say uh, we'll call it we'll call the color text uh, normal. No, oh, text normal. And uh, we'll say color, and we'll just do 255. And if you remember with our little color function, that'll set everything to 255, which will be white. So we'll start with white. We'll just default to that. And then we'll have one called uh, disabled. Disabled. Mm, disabled. And we'll do a color of... Uh, let's do... Let's do a color of... 128, that'll give us a gray. Um, disabled, no, not disabled, disabled, disabled. Actually, let's do a gray. Let's do gray so that we can just do an alpha. We'll do, an, we'll do a nice alpha that way. Uh, let's keep the alpha at 255, so full, fully opaque. We like opaque because that's who we are here. So when we uh, disable the button, so if it's not enabled, then, oh, and that's the other thing we're going to need is we need instead of a cell that's the cell that's our button color so let's make a text color field here and we'll say that we'll start it out as the normal text color but whenever we actually disable the button we'll set that text color to the disabled text color and then we can say else um Let's just grab this and we'll set it back to the normal color. So that means that if we ever want to enable or disable the button, we don't want to just come in here and hijack everything and just say, take this table and then set the interactable to false. We need to go through this function so that this gets set correctly. But that's okay. So the, all we need to do is just follow protocol. Follow what we have set in our API, right? So. That should do it, except we're not using that color yet. So let's grab self.textColor and come down here and see where we print, which is right here. So what we can do is we'll do love.graphics.setColor. Set color. And we'll set the color to the text color. And if you see here, we will set this color Back. That's the one that we saved beforehand. That's really just a nice thing to do, but we don't have to do that. It's really a matter of how you're gonna how you're gonna manage things. If you set colors of things that you draw before you draw them to the screen for everything that you do, then you don't have to worry about this. But I'm just doing this because we may not do that. So it, it so this should print our label for our button in that white and then if we press space and you see that it does it makes that text gray and we'll re-enable it and it's white again so that's awesome that's exactly what we wanted and then you see these this group up here we've got button colors we've got text colors we can make a function here uh, to set those after the fact. So we could say, uh, say, te say text colors, and we could say normal and disabled, right? Normal and disabled. And then we can set, uh, we can set them like this. We can say normal. And we can say labeled. Now we could go in here and we could say assert, assert. Oops, I don't remember how uh, the assert function. Um, 
we used yes we have used it we've used it several times of course uh yes that's right assert nor let's see type uh is it type type uh of class type yes it's type of normal equals table that's what we want um yeah that's exactly what we want so we'll say we can we can we can add this nice little error check in here so we can say the normal that's uh, normal parameter normal parameter must be a table crazy people we could do the same thing with the disabled so that kind of tells us what it needs to be don't have to do that optional but it's nice okay so we can set the text colors that way well we can also do the button colors that way also so we can say button we'll just do it button dot colors and well we got well we got normal highlighted or we'll just say highlight um, pressed and disabled disables disables disabled so we've got normal there and we can just do this uh, and again this is optional but it's kind of nice especially if you haven't used your stuff in a while and you don't know what the heck is going on if you get a an error or whatever this will tell you exactly what's wrong you gotta have a table man you gotta have a table of colors colors and things you know so let's grab these and we'll set these up down here we'll we will also uh we'll look at this probably we'll we'll test this here in a bit but I'm, i wanted to go ahead and set this up just so that we have it if we want to um customize any of this stuff and of course we could always uh, um access these directly once we have the the actual basically table <laughs> that this returns and just ask, access them directly but it's nice to be able to set a bunch of them with one function which is what we can do there so that's great but there's another thing that we we want to really improve and that is how this is being printed out because if you um come here and uh, let's let's just make this a little bit longer and we'll see here in just a moment if you do this then see this kind of just overflows the button well it turns out that there is uh, somewhat of a better way to do that and that is instead of love.graphics.print you can do love.graphics.printf and that is going to allow us to be a little bit more um, specific about how we want to print our buttons so these buttons uh are the, not the buttons i'm sorry the, the the text so the text we want to basically center it and what print f does is it, it lets us it sort of takes care of wrapping for us if you see here it basically implements wrapping but the alignment only aligns x so it's a it's it aligns it in a rectangle where the limit is its width so this right here is going to be the width how many horizontal pixels before the text wraps well first of all let's start here so the position on the x-axis and that will be again uh, should be the for, for x anyway that should be the left side of our rectangle which is not going to be um, it's not going to be this because that's remember we already said that's the middle of our rectangle um because we can come up we can actually come up here and uh do a little bit of uh let's draw some uh some little guidelines so there's a love.graphics.line and then we can say uh and that takes an x for a first x y for first point that you want to draw and let's say uh let's just actually say this this will be great and then it takes uh, actually any number of x y points and so we're just going to draw a single uh single straight line and it's going to be we're going to draw it in the middle of this thing i'll show you i'll show you let's see did i 
do we oh yeah and that's gonna make an error because we let me let me comment this out I want to show you where self dot you see that little line right there that just lets us know where the center of the button is so we can just see it visually let's do that also this is just for testing let's do that also for um, for the uh, uh, for the, the the Y position as well, and that all all that will involve is doing this and changing the height to the width, such as that, and then we should see a nice little uh, you see it up right there, and we could actually move it in front of the of the text, but you get the idea. So right now it's pretty much in the center, but again we have this overflow. So what we'll do is we'll uncomment this. We'll comment this uh, and we'll put this back in. So we want self.positionx, which again is, is in the middle of the button because of the way that we're drawing the button. So we want to subtract uh, half the width so that we can get back over there to the left side. All right. And um, we also want to do the same thing for the y position. Because remember, it's in the middle too, so we'll we'll subtract. Um, let's actually subtract. Well, actually, let's leave it like this, and you'll see. We'll just see what it does. Um, and then we need the width of the button, so that's just self dot width. So that's going to be our the size or the width of our of our containing rectangle. And we'll say we want this text to be centered. On the x-axis, anyway, that's what it'll do within this rectangle. So we run this, and then we get this. And you see how it's wrapping now, and it's not going outside of the rectangle. That's what we want. But we're still not centered on the y-axis. Now, um, I'll probably have to look into this some more, but uh, that also means that we're not going to need this, and we're not going to need this. We might end up using this. Um, what we can do is we can say a minus uh, FH divided by 2. So that's half of the width of the height of the font. And we get closer, but really we know, as we know, this really should be moved up because it's wrapped. But if I, if I change it to where that text is not wrapped, then it all works great. And you see how that's that's in the middle. That's fantastic. Um, but how might we tell a difference there and know exactly what to do? Uh, how do we know if the text has wrapped? Um, there is a uh, there is a function that will show some of that in the uh, font stuff. Uh, where was that? Is it line? It's not line. No, that's not right. That's not correct. Uh, that is a, uh, let's actually, let's go to graphics.printf. And I think it may be in here. Um, you have the align mode. And yeah, it's font. I think it's font dot get wrap. So gets format gets formatting information for text given a wrap limit. So you give it the wrap, and then you give it the wrap limit. So let's just let's let's experiment with that for a second. We have the font that we're grabbing. Um, so let's get that stuff. So let me just go ahead and love dot graphics dot get is it rat get wrap no it's just font dot get wrap sorry font get wrap and that returns the width oh yes and we have to tell it the text that we want and that's our label on our button and the wrap limit which is the width of our button and that will return the maximum width of the wrapped text a sequence containing each line of text that was wrapped. Okay, so local. <clears throat> we probably don't need that. I'm just going to use an underline for that because I don't think I need that. And then I'll say uh, wrapped. So that equals all of that. And I think, I think 
we can check that the 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 size of this probably array returned here in this this uh variable that I'm calling wrapped we should be able to get um yeah so we can get the number we should be able to get the number of lines here let's do this let's instead of say wrap let's say lines it kind of makes it a little more clear doesn't it and let me just print the size of that um, array. And that also means we're going to have to um, enable the debug mode. And let me bring the... So see, it's telling me two lines because I've got... Uh, it is indeed... It doesn't even have two lines because it's wrapping. Let's change it back and say that. And let's see if it comes back with just one line. And it indeed does. So that tells us what we want to know so that we can make a, an intelligent decision um, on how we center this text. So back to the button. So um, what we can do here, I think, is we can take this height. And if there's only one line then we just want to subtract half the height but if there's two lines then we want to subtract the whole height which would be just basically it's half the height times the number of lines and that really only that really only works for no that's not true let's see what that does oh let's see okay that's still still correct let's add that so it will wrap and see if indeed yes that is what we want people that is exactly what we want so now our our button text intelligently wraps and it's centered we could change that that could be changed that could be parameterized to be a left left handed wrap or right wrap whatever but for these buttons I would imagine that in general you want center so that's how we're gonna do it here I'm going to get rid of that. So now we have a nice a button that wraps uh, text nicely. And we could make this button larger. So it's, what is it? Uh, uh, there's our height. So let's see more. And once, what happens when we do that? We double the size of the button. Yeah, see, it's still working. Beautiful. All right. We'll go back, undo that. And I'm going to just comment these out. Who knows? Maybe we'll use those again sometime. I like being able to sort of visualize that center area. Okay. So I think our button is much better uh, than it was before. Let's go to the main menu. And let's also apply that to our main menu text. So instead of saying that, let's just say main menu. And let's do, let's do what we learned and say print print F okay so we're gonna do a main menu and really if we're gonna do a print F that means that we want our left side to start from zero and then we want to the width of our of our wrap rectangle if you will or our the, or the rectangle we want to center it within goes all the way to love.graphics dot get width see what I'm doing there and we'll also say we want to center this fella and that's another question. Does the um, does printf does that require this, or does it uh, automatically assume that you want? Probably doesn't. So we'll just specify it. Um, let's let's uh, run that real quick. So now you see our main menu text is centered, and then we have it coming down 25 pixels from the top. I like that. Let's do the same thing for our uh, button. And um, so uh, let's stick in a couple of, let's call them screen width is love.graphics.getWidth. Um, and is that, let's go ahead and get the height also. So screen height is get height. Like this. We're going to get the height. You know, we needed the height. So we've got 
x, which is now going to be, we're going to put it in the middle, so that's screen width divided by 2. And then we want to, we could actually, let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and put it in the middle, but let's move it, let's, let's put it, offset it from the middle by 60. So we'll, we'll put it in the middle, minus 60 pixels. Why? Because it'll be, it's just what I want to do. Start, not says start, start. So we'll call it the start button. And we have this. Oh, I like it. It's starting to look like an actual menu. Okay. That looks great. We need to change this uh, button click here because what I want to do with this start is we have this scene over here. It's called test. And when the start button is clicked, I want to say self dot. Um, and I believe it's switch. Is that correct? And then we should have that test scene in there. But the problem with this is this function is not aware of this object. So this, see, we're not, this function is not contained within this table. And even if it was, um, we can't really hook that specific one in there and have have that callback call this particular object's callback with the self variable intact. That's okay though because we can do something a little bit different and we're going to make sort of a little I don't know what you call it um, uh, well I mean it's kind of like a callback sh like shim function I suppose I don't know. But anyway here's how I'm going to solve it. We're going to make a function and it's going to take a button for parameter and you see I'm assigning it to this thing called self.click or this this uh, variable called self.click so it's in our little modules um, table and what it's going to do is it's going to say self dot on click so I'm going to call our on click with the button and you notice that I'm calling it with the colon which means that it's going to implicitly uh, give it the uh, cor point to the correct object that is basically this button and which are not the button, this the main menu. So that's what I want to do. And so whenever now, whenever we add that, I want to add it and subtract it like that. So you see what see what's going on. So I'm saying call on click, add the self function, and of course in order for that to work, I need to put that inside this module inside this table. And now this will now have this will now have self inside of it as well and we can also we can access the scene manager from here let's look at that real quick and see if that works click start and yes it does it takes us to the test scene we have where the little guy is swimming okay let's add another button let's call this let's call it the exit button its text will be exit and instead of Let's let's decrease the amount that we let's do that. So we're gonna do one of them is half the screen height minus thirty. The other one's half the screen height plus thirty. That should and and this is another thing that is gonna be annoying until we get everything up and up and running. Is we're gonna have to do these separate little little diddles here for our buttons to draw and update that's all right there we go now we got a little but how do we tell the difference because look what's nice is we only have to hook this on button click well but on button well we do get the button we could compare and see which button it is that's that's given us this call we could do that let's we could do it that way so we could say if button equals self dot button just the plain old button uh, then and then we could say else if button equals self dot exit button then let's say we want to 
quit. Just like that. Say end. Okay. So that's one way to do it. You could also say uh, if the button dot label. Whoops. You could do it that. You could say if button dot label equals start. So you could do that instead. But since we have these, I'll just leave it like this. So if that button that we and let's change this to. Um, yeah, yeah, forget it. I'm playing to change this to start button. And self dot start button. I think that's the only place. So let's let's run it. And where did I miss that? Right here. Of course. These two places right here. Didn't rename mode. Now go to the start menu. Or a start, we can do that, and then I believe I can, yeah, and then I can come back here and say exit, and it and it leaves. So we have the beginnings of a menu or of a user interface, albeit simple, but hey, this is really nice, right? We can actually have uh, a, we have a menu, um, and we have our our button will now wrap text correctly um, and of course like with this right now of course I have it set to wrap um, once it gets past the width of the actual button you could actually pull that in some you could subtract a little bit of that width and just have a little bit of a border around it so that it doesn't completely look weird when it wraps although uh, when we did it you know it didn't look it doesn't look that bad. It looks looks all right. It's just kind of tight up at the top, and then this, well, up at the top we can fix, but the side the sides actually look fine. So anyway, there's a lot of flexibility. You can change that kind of stuff. And um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. We could uh, take a look real quick at our um, self dot exit button, and then what what was it? Uh, we could try out our little um, colors so colors and then we had what normal color yeah so we could do the normal color which would be um, what would the normal color be let's do a, a green right and then pressed color would be or hover color highlighted color would be um let's do uh 64 to 5 let's do 225 just for fun i don't i don't know what this is going to look like but we're just going to try it 64 and 255 and then uh, the next one is pressed right so let's do uh 128 to 55 128 to 55 and the other one is disabled. So we'll do uh you know what we should do? If you don't wanna if you don't want to Yeah. What we can do is we can say wait, we could do this. Uh well for now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it like this for now. So if you don't have, if you don't give me a disabled table, we'll just say, um, we'll just say this is the same thing. Can I do that? I think I can do that. Let's try that. So we won't, we will not specify disabled here. Let's see what happens to that exit button. Did I, did I give it three tables? I gave it three, well, three arrays. They're really arrays. Let's, uh, let me print that type. Oh, look. No, that's right. For fun, let's print that. Make sure I'm doing that right. What is that? What is that uh, saying? It is saying...
It's saying nil. Okay. Did I, did I do that wrong? Colors. So these two are correct. Normal and highlight. Normal and highlight. Let's see. Let's, uh... Let's print that and see what happens. See, that's a table. That's working fine. Oh, I know. Sorry about that. Got to have that colon, boys. Need that colon. Got to have some healthy colons. Cleansing your colons, people. There we go. Now we got our exit. Look at that. See how? And then if I press it, see that? Beautiful. Except let's... uh. Let's make it a little bit less uh a little bit less green, at least initially. And then we'll do uh two I don't know, two twelve. I like that. Yeah, look at that. Boom. And uh let's uh let's do two hundred here. Two hundred. So you, anyway. Really, we're just demonstrating that that stuff's working, and it is. Just exit that way. Beautiful. All right. I think that's good enough to wrap this episode. It's been fun, and uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, same place, same channel.